As of the November 2023 release, Power BI has a new preview feature called Visual Slicers. Visual Slicers allow us to set up a report like this, where we can go through and click from item to item using thumbnails instead of text descriptions. Then when we click one of the thumbnails, we can get a more detailed set of information. The only way to do this in the past was to download an add-in visual from the Visuals Online Library, but now we'll be able to do it natively within the program. So I'm going to show you how to build this specific report. There are a lot of little things that have to be set to build the report the way I've built it. Most of these things are completely optional, but I want to give you some ideas on how to use this feature. You don't have to worry about keeping up with all the individual things that I'm going to change, because I've included a notes page, and on this notes page, is every item that I'm going to adjust. You can download this file from their website and follow along with me, or you can use the notes page to work at your own pace. But everything that I'm going to do is documented. So let's start with just a quick examination of the data set. The data set is a simple table that I've loaded directly into Power BI, so there is no external data source. So we have the stock number, we have a displayed SKU, which is just the stock number with a title, the list price, the sale price, the description, and then the part that's going to drive the actual visual slicer is the image URL. So the image URL will have to point to image files that are publicly accessible, or at least accessible to the people within your organization. So back to the report page. If you have the November 2023 update, to get access to these new visuals, we'll go up to File, and then Options and Settings, and Options. In the Preview Features section, what we want to check is this option here called Button Slicer Visual. We'll hit OK. This will require a restart of the Power BI program. Since I've already added it, I won't need to do the restart. So going up to the Insert Visuals section, the two new visuals that we have access to are the Visual Slicer and the Visual Card. Now to build this report, we're going to use the Visual Slicer to build a list of thumbnails on the left. We'll use the Visual Card to display the larger image of whichever thumbnail was selected. And then we'll use three standard card visualizations for the list price, the sale price, and the description. So let's go back up to Insert Visual, and we'll insert a Visual Slicer. So I'm going to stretch this out. And for the field that's going to drive this visual, we're going to let this be the stock number. Now this is actually going to serve as the label that is displayed below the image. Now let's get into the customization. So for size and style, we're going to turn off the background. So for title, instead of it saying stock number, we'll have it say select an item. For the background color, we're going to use the same color scheme that the product line uses. And so for every one of these color instances, we're going to use the hex code FEBD16. The nice thing is once you've entered it, it will become just a selectable item for any future color changes. For the slicer settings, single select should be on, but if it's not, we want to make sure it is because you only want the user to be able to select one thing at a time. But we also want to make sure that they select something. You don't want to allow them to select nothing because if they don't have anything selected, then the report will show just the first item in the database. So we want to make sure they have something selected. We'll go to layout. We're going to set the rows to six rows and one column. And we'll take all the space out between the cards. That way we can maximize space. Now there are some other options in here that I'm not going to change, but you should be aware of, and that's for the overflow. Right now we have what's called a continuous scroll. So the user can just scroll through the list at their leisure. But if you were to set this to paginated, then the user will have to click an arrow to move to the next set of choices and then the next set and then the next set. Also the direction of the scroll. So in this case, we're scrolling vertically, but you could also set this to scroll horizontally. So we'll go back to vertical and continuous scroll. We're gonna to go to call out values. These are the labels being derived from the stock number and we're gonna center those. Next, we'll go to images. And here's where we pick the field that holds the image URLs. So for field, I'm gonna hit add data and then choose image URL. And now we see all the images. I'm gonna change this to normal instead of fill and we'll take the space between the images and reduce that to zero. Lastly, for the button section, we're gonna tell it no border and no fill. I can size this down a little bit. Now, how do we want these buttons to behave when the user hovers over the images, clicks an image, or to indicate which image had been selected? In the button section, for the default state, we'll say no border, no fill. When the user hovers over an image, we're gonna give it a border, and that border color is going to be that corporate color that we said earlier and we'll also set it to two pixels wide. We'll also give it an accent bar, and the accent bar will be the same color and three pixels wide. So now you can see when we hover over the image, we get this box. Now when a user selects an item, how do we indicate which item had been selected? So we'll go back to the button section and choose the selected state, 
and in the selected state, we'll just have an accent bar that's black and four pixels wide. So we can see when we hover, we get the yellow box, but when we select an item, we get the black line. Now there appears to be a little bug in the slicer visual that when an item is selected, it no longer displays its label. I'm hoping this will be fixed when the full release comes out. But for right now, it's just something you have to be aware of. Now it's time to use the image card visual. This is the part of the report that will show the larger version of the picture based on the user's selection. So we'll go up to the visual library, and then we're going to come down and use the new kind of card that will allow us to use images. So I'll stretch this out. The field that we're going to use to populate the visual is going to be the image URL. Now at the moment, it's displaying the actual URL text, but now we're going to change all that. So in the size and style section, we're going to turn off the background. In the title section, we'll turn on the title. And for the heading, we want it to show the item number. So instead of typing in static text, we're going to hit the FX button, and we're going to select the displayed SKU field. So this puts the item number in the upper left-hand corner. We'll also set the text to 19 points. Make it a little easier to read. In the callout section, we're going to turn the values off. That will suppress the actual text-based URL and we'll turn the label off. Now in the image section, we'll turn the image on, and for the image type, we'll set that to image URL. Now which field holds the image URL, we'll hit the FX button, and then go in and select the image URL field. Lastly, in the cards section, we'll turn off the fill and we'll turn off the border. And so now we have a nice large version of the item that's selected by the user. We'll do a little resize and positioning. You'll probably want to go through here and find your largest image and then just make sure it's not getting cut off. So basically resize it for the largest case scenario. Now the next three are going to be fairly straightforward because they're just simple card visualizations, but I am going to do some nice cosmetic tweaks to them. So we'll go up to our visuals library and just add a standard card visual. Now this one doesn't need to be that large because all it's going to display is a title and the list price. So for the field, we'll choose list price. For size and style, we'll turn off the background. For the title, we'll turn on the title, and we'll just type in statically list price. For the callout value, we'll set the font size to 22, the display units to none, and then just make sure the decimal place value is set to two decimal places. And then finally turn off the category label. We'll do a resize, and we'll put it right here for now. Now for the sale price card. It's just another card visual. The driving field for this will be sale price. We'll stretch it out, give it about this much space. As before, size and properties, we'll turn the background off. For the title, we'll turn it on and set a static title of sale price. We'll set the font to 30 points and the background color to our corporate color. For the callout value, we'll set the font to 60 points. No display units and two decimal place precision. And then finally turn off the category label. We'll resize it and position it right about here. Now the final element to our report, the description. This will be just another card visual and we'll put it right about here, give it some room. The data field for this will be description, size and style, no background. For the callout value, we'll set the font size to 26 and no category label. This is another one of those fields where you want to find the item with the largest description and make sure that none of it's being cut off. And so for this, I'm going to do a little resize. And now we have our fully interactive report. If you're going to publish and share this report, one of the things I recommend you do is turn off the header icons. These are the icons that appear in the upper right hand corner of a visual and allow the user to do things like export the data or engage the spotlight or pin the visual. Since the only thing I want the user to be able to do is to look through my catalog, I don't want these icons in the upper right hand corner, because as you can see, sometimes they corrupt the titles, and you don't want to give the user the ability to do things like remove a visual or add comments. So going back to Power BI, with a visual selected, we'll go to Properties, and then turn off the header icons. And you'll need to do this for each visual. Now when I republish the report, Now when the user hovers over a visual or interacts with it, you don't get the icons in the upper right-hand corner. So now you've seen the new visual slicer and the visual card. 
with a little bit of creativity, you can probably do some amazing things with this. So remember to feel free to download this file. We have the notes section with all the visuals that I use and all of the modifications I made in the properties. It looks like a lot to deal with, but once you've done it a couple times, it's really just a couple minutes worth of work. So let me know in the comments what you think about this and if you have any creative ideas for its use. Thanks for watching, and if you have any ideas for an upcoming video, please put it in the comments, and I'll see what I can do for you. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.